Over on Jaguar Gator 8, a new college football video is out. In this video, we talk about a 2000 controversy involving VMI and the Southern Conference, and how VMI wanted to drop out of the conference because they stunk so much at football. Click the card in the upper right corner to watch. And now, on with our feature presentation. On October 31st, 1988, as the Denver Broncos were getting ready to leave their team hotel and travel to the Hoosier Dome to take on the Indianapolis Colts in front of a national television audience on Monday Night Football, something absolutely bizarre happened that scared the team, and that was a pretty bad omen for how the rest of the night was going to go for them. The team bus was carrying the Broncos down I-465, with policemen giving the bus an escort so they could arrive to the stadium, as is incredibly typical. Two deputies... Tom Elliott and Bart McAtee were leading the way to get the Broncos to the stadium. And as the deputies were leading their escort in what should have been an absolutely routine event, disaster struck when a car in front of them, driven by a woman by the name of Teresa Joseph, just decided to stop in the middle of the road. Joseph thought that the police were pulling her over when they were simply just escorting the Broncos to the stadium. And instead of Joseph pulling over to the side like a reasonable person would do in this situation, or going into a different lane, Joseph decided that it would be a good idea to bring her car to a screeching halt in the middle of the highway. As you can probably expect, this did not end well. Elliot's motorcycle was unable to stop in time, and it collided with the back of Joseph's car. And then, to add injury to insult, the bus was unable to stop in time, which meant that the bus collided with the back of Elliot's motorcycle. Both deputies, Elliot and McAtee, had to be taken to a nearby hospital, and while they did suffer injuries, with Elliot receiving more injuries than McAtee, fortunately, no one else got hurt, and the deputies were able to be discharged from the hospital that night. Joseph, meanwhile, was charged with failure to yield the right of way to an emergency vehicle, which makes sense, seeing as she just decided to stop in the middle of the road. And this meant that the Broncos were delayed in getting to the Hoosier Dome, since their bus got hit, and they needed to find some more police officers to lead the escort. Well, as crazy as that entire story is, amazingly enough, that was not the weirdest thing that happened off the field during this 1988 game. Seriously. Somehow, a story involving a police escort gone horribly wrong, where a woman just decides to stop in the middle of the road because she decided to rewrite the words to Sammy Hagar's I Can't Drive 55 to I Can't Drive 1, and a story involving the Broncos not making it to the stadium when they were supposed to, having their entire pregame routine delayed, was not the craziest thing that happened off the field on this Halloween night in 1988. Because during the game, inside the stadium, in the strangest and the craziest way possible, one couple got married. I don't mean that there was a proposal on the video board that you see at all these sporting events. I mean an actual marriage with a ceremony and a pastor and everything, taking place in the stadium during this game, not coordinated by the Colts. And somehow, we're only scratching the surface with this, because the story gets even more absurd the more that you know. Because this is the story behind what has to be, without a doubt, the strangest halftime show in the over half-century-long history of Monday Night Football. Before we break down how this all worked out, because it truly is bizarre. We need some context to understand the actual football game taking place, as well as why the heck someone thought this would be a good idea in the first place. It's October 31st, 1988. It's Halloween on a Monday night, and we've got an absolutely big Monday night football game on our hands in front of a national television audience on ABC between the Indianapolis Colts and the Denver Broncos. Aside from the fact that this is the first ever Monday night football game held in Indianapolis, this is a really big game for both of these teams. For the Colts, they sit at 3-5, and five, two and a half games back of the final wildcard spot halfway through the year. If they lose this one, for all intents and purposes, their season is completely dead in the water. As for the Broncos, they enter at 4-4, four and four, half a game back of the Seattle Seahawks for the division lead. So a win here would go a long way in helping them win their third straight division title. But we're not here to focus on the game. At least, not yet. Trust me, we'll get to the game in a bit, because it plays an absolutely hysterical part in our story. But in this sold-out contest, where 60,544 people attended, we're here to focus on just two of them. A couple involving a man named Dave Huffman 
and a woman named Anne Castleton. Now, we know very little about these two people, what their personal lives were like before this, or what they did for a living, and I dug high and low trying to find stuff, but just came up empty-handed. However, what we do know is that sometime around April 1987, 18 months before the game took place, Huffman and Castleton started dating. And immediately, the Denver couple shared a common bond, with that bond being their love for the hometown Broncos. It made sense why both Huffman and Castleton loved the Broncos, seeing as they were both residing in Denver, and the Broncos were a really good team, as right before they started dating, they made it to Super Bowl 21, representing the AFC in the big game before falling to the New York Giants. You can learn more about that by clicking the card in the upper right corner. And in 1988, Huffman and Castleton were planning on going to some more Broncos games. However, there was one week that they could absolutely not make it. At least, not on paper. On Halloween weekend, Huffman and Castleton had booked a trip to the town of Richmond, Indiana, a small town with a population hovering around the 35,000 range. The reason for this trip was because Anne had a sister who lived in that town, and they wanted to visit her. It's unclear why the trip had to be booked for this weekend and not another weekend, but regardless, the couple that would have been going strong for a year and a half at this point was going to go from Denver to a small town in Indiana to celebrate Halloween. That's when the NFL schedule makers, somehow, threw them a lifeline of all lifelines and gave them an opportunity to do something that they did not think was possible. Because when the NFL released its schedule for the 1988 season, Guess who was playing in Indianapolis that weekend, not even two hours away, and not even 90 miles away from the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis? You guessed it, the Denver Broncos. It was a complete stroke of luck that somehow, the schedule worked out this way. To the point where now, Huffman and Castleton were not only able to watch this game out of their home market, but were able to go to the game. A drive that's not even lasting two hours, just like a lot of football fans, wasn't stopping them from going to this game, especially a game this big on Monday Night Football. However, that's when the couple had an absolutely bizarre idea. What if, when they went to the game, they got married? As in, they go to the game as engaged, and they leave as a married couple, getting married literally inside the stadium during the game. Well, the idea was so crazy and so ridiculous that they thought it just might work. As Huffman said, I asked Anne, if I can get tickets to the game, will you marry me? Castleton said when recalling the incident, I said yes. I never gave it a second thought. Now that raises the obvious question. Why do it at this particular game? You might think that it would have to do with the fact that Castleton's sister would be in attendance, or they would be with family at the game, and they wanted to share the moment with them. It's a logical guess, but it's wrong. Because they only bought three tickets one for each of them, and one for Danny Vaughn, an attorney that they found in the city who would perform the ceremony. Turns out, they just decided to get married at the Hoosier Dome. Because why not? Huffman said, We had planned all season to attend the game because Anne has a sister who lives in Richmond. And when we talked about getting married, we looked at each other and said, Why not do it at the Hoosier Dome? However, there was just one small problem. Actually, there seemed to be many problems on the surface with this, but the big one was that this was so heat of the moment, and so last minute, and so poorly planned out at first, that even though when they bought the seats, they were all in the upper deck in section 347, and they were all away from each other, meaning that the couple and the attorney wouldn't even be sitting next to each other. Huffman was banking on the fact that Colts fans in the area would get wind of the news, and would be willing to trade seats so everyone could sit together which, depending on how good the seats are, is an incredibly bold proposition, especially as a visiting fan, and especially as a fan of the Broncos, since the Colts and Broncos, due to the Elway situation, don't exactly like each other. Hey, I know you spent good money on these seats, but would you mind splitting up and moving over a few rows to a worse seat? I'm trying to get married here. The good news was that it never had to come to that, however, because the Broncos and a Denver radio station caught wind of this, and decided to provide three tickets so that everyone could sit next to each other. How they got the tickets? Seeing as it seemed to be in the same section of the stadium, I'm not entirely sure. And why the Broncos didn't offer them to get married in their own stadium, where they presumably had a lot of good memories together, versus the Hoosier Dome, where they presumably never been before, 
I have no idea. But regardless, the wedding was on, and Huffman could not be more thrilled about it, saying, It's an honor for us to be married in the Hoosier Dome. It means more to us than going on a cruise or anything else. At halftime of the game, Huffman and Castleton would officially become husband and wife, with Vaughn officiating the ceremony. They went to the game dressed in Broncos apparel, wearing a Broncos sweater and blue jeans. Forget tuxedos and gowns, they were getting married in sweaters and jeans. As Castleton said on why she wore what she wore, I just can't see wearing a wedding gown to a football game. Besides, we never go to a Broncos game without our sweaters. However, there's a major problem with getting married during a football game. Most people want their wedding day to be perfect, and they plan out every little and minute detail, trying their best to eliminate anything that could go wrong or dampen the mood. And when you have Broncos fans getting married at halftime of a Broncos game, their mood is often dependent, you know, on how well the Broncos play. It's why for most people, just the thought of getting married during a football game seems ridiculous. I want to remember this as the day I celebrated with my friends and my family and officially committed to being with the love of my life, until death do us part. I don't want to remember this day as the day my team lost a big game. And folks, as you could probably tell by the highlights of this, since for obvious reasons, I have no footage of the wedding or of Huffman or Castleton, of all the Broncos games to get married at, they probably chose, by far, the worst one of them all. Because when I say this game was ugly with a capital U, I truly mean it. Because when Huffman and Castleton got married, they did so with the Broncos losing, get ready for this, 45 to 10. Seriously. They just so happened to get married at arguably the biggest blowout in Monday Night Football history. Midway through the second quarter, the Broncos were already down 31-0, and Eric Dickerson already had four rushing touchdowns, tying the Colts franchise record. The Broncos lost the turnover battle with a margin of minus four. The Colts had a whopping 244 rushing yards and over 5.3 yards per carry, in an average that was way higher before garbage time when the backups came in. The Broncos couldn't sack the quarterback one single time. And even though the Colts won the game 55-23, it wasn't even that close. As midway through the fourth quarter, the Colts were up 55-10. For some perspective on how bad this game was, because trust me, it was really bad. The 55 points scored by the Colts set a record at the time for the most points ever scored on Monday Night Football. Although Philadelphia would surpass that when they scored 59 in a 2010 game against Washington. At halftime, with the Colts leading by 35 points, it marked the largest halftime lead in Monday Night Football history, which is a record that still stands today, although it has been tied by the Seattle Seahawks, who led 35-0 at the half against the Philadelphia Eagles in 2005. The 45 points scored at the half by the Colts was the second most in NFL history by any team, only trailing the Green Bay Packers, who had 49 points in a 1983 game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The 55 points scored by the Colts was the most they had since moving to Indianapolis, and the 55 points allowed by the Broncos was, at the time, the most points they've allowed in an NFL game, though they allowed more than that three times prior to the NFL-AFL merger. In other words, I legitimately don't think you could have picked a worse game to get married at. Still, this has to be the craziest halftime show, if you can even call it that, in the history of Monday Night Football. For two fans on the visiting team to just decide, hey, you want to get married, and not only buy a ticket for an attorney to officiate everything, but then for the Broncos to catch wind of it and make sure they all sit together, that's already crazy. But for them to get married during one of the biggest lowlights and embarrassments in their franchise's history? For some perspective on how hysterically awful that was, imagine a Titans fan going to New England and getting married at halftime of the game where they trail the Patriots 59-0. That's what that was like. Still, even though the Broncos lost big time on the field, it didn't mean that all their fans who traveled to attend this game lost. Because nothing says surviving a marriage in sickness than surviving a 35-point halftime deficit on national TV. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com. And be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below.
If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at JaguarGator9. To see college football videos, subscribe to JaguarGator8. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.